Let me ask you something. How far do you throw? Don't those words just invigorate a certain feeling? The good old disc golf taboo of how far does one throw? What is your max distance? Downhill, flat, forehand, backhand, all those fun things. It's so shrouded in mystery and uncertainty when you ask somebody that question. They might say, well, I, you know, I can sometimes throw between this and this, and it depends on the wind, and it depends on the day, and this and that. I want answers, you know? How far do these pros throw? How far do the YouTubers throw? What are our, what are our real distance capabilities? I'm creating this specific video as an internet encyclopedia entry of my distance capabilities. Because I gotta be honest with you, I don't really come out in the fields very often, if ever, and throw and measure my shots. I haven't done this in a long time. I don't really know. When somebody asks me that question, I also get a little cagey and I'm not really sure what to say. I don't wanna sound like I'm bragging. I don't wanna sound like a wimp. It can be difficult. So today we have full transparency and I'm gonna show you exactly how far I am capable of throwing each and every disc. Stay to the very end of this video to see my very max distance throw. But before we do all that, we're gonna hop into the lab. That's right, we're going back to the lab and we're gonna get to the bottom of just where this distance comes from in the first place. All right, we are back once again in the lab and we're gonna talk a little bit about how I'm able to achieve my distance. Now, unfortunately, there are no easy shortcuts that allow you to just throw further instantly. No matter how many tutorial videos you watch, there's always gonna be the need for routine, dedication, and consistency. Learning to throw further requires constant practice that you're implementing into your daily routine. That actually brings me to the sponsor of today's video, which is part of my routine, and that is AG1. Whether it comes to disc golf or just general life, I'm not always the best at having a consistent routine, but a product like AG1 helps me start my day in the morning off on the right foot. And you might be asking, what is AG1? What is all this stuff? Well, let me just tell you real quick. AG1 is honestly a real jack of all trades. It can help support your immune health, your gut health, your stress and mood, and also your focus and energy levels as well. I genuinely believe when you are trying to set routines, and this can apply certainly to disc golf, Having something like AG1 to start your day off, just already nailing your routine, something that's super easy to use, it's a great way to get things moving. The great thing about AG1 is instead of taking all these different supplements and vitamins, you have it all in one drink. All you need is one scoop of your greens powder, eight to 10 ounces of cold water, then just shake and enjoy. Now, I know something this color can scare people away, but it honestly has a pretty nice aftertaste. It's really not bad at all. And it's super easy to drink in the morning, get your day started right. If you wanna try AG1 for yourself, you can go to drinkag1.com slash Trevor Staub to get started on your order. The link is in the description. AG1 is giving my community a year supply of their D3 plus K2 vitamin, as well as five of these travel packs with their first purchase. Thanks again to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to talking distance. All right, back out at the field. So. To set up these conditions here, I've tried to find the most uh, controlled area possible, basically. I'm out here at Lynchburg College, and basically I have a flat field. This field is very flat. There's little to no wind. I would describe it as like an occasional light breeze, but if it gusts at all, I just won't throw during that. But we should get a, as close as accurate as we can. I mean, it's fall in Virginia. It, there's gonna be a tiny bit of breeze. I'm gonna basically do throws with every disc on every angles. I'm gonna give you stock distances and then also max distances so that we can explore together what does the distance look like for me and uh, what's going on exactly. I've got my range finder out here so we can get laser accuracy for the best possible results here. And we're gonna find out putter, mid-range, fairway, distance driver. What are my stock distances with each of those? And then also, what is my max distance capable with those discs? And just kind of see what it looks like and also get that burning question out of how far can I throw flat ground? Also, important to mention, I'm going to be doing a uh, forehand as well for each throw because you know you gotta have both because people people ask that. It's always like a two-sided coin. They're like, oh, how far do you throw? Backhand and forehand, you know? I don't know. Um, yeah, so we're gonna jump right into this starting with the putters. Now remember, these first throws that I'm gonna be doing the kind of stock throws, this would be Heiser, Flat, and Anheuser. I am really just throwing these how I would throw an actual golf shot. These aren't max distance. These are to kind of give you an idea of what the stock distances would be. And I'll put every single one up uh, on measurement to get an idea. Okay, our first throw is a stock putter Anheuser. There we go. Very stock throw. Next, I'm going to throw a stock putter Heiser. My slammer here.
All right, lastly, I'm going to throw a stock flat putter shot here with this judge. Keep in mind that when I say stock flat, it probably means it's gonna come out with a slight bit of Anheuser because that's how I throw flat shots apparently. For the stock shots, I'm not gonna do, do a ton of different takes because we're just trying to establish something, you know, baseline. But when I'm going for the max distance, I might throw a few different shots to try and really get the max distance possible with that disc. Okay, this is gonna be stock forehand putter. It's the zone, you could call it a putter or mid, it's, it's a putter. For this, it's a putter, <laughs> just stock. I'm only doing one throw for the forehands. There we go, my beautiful forehand. <laughs> All right, as you can see from the stock putter distances, nothing too crazy, pretty modest. I'm interested to see with the max distance, how far I can push it out there. For the max distance, I'm gonna be throwing as many shots as I need until I throw one that I feel like, yeah, that's a max distance shot. I'm not super concerned about these earlier molds once we get to the distance drivers later, then I'm probably gonna be throwing my arm out to try and get something as far as I can. Uh, but I think we will be pleasantly surprised. I'm interested to see like what my gapping is between each mold on these max distance shots. So let's try the putter first. Here we go, max distance. Oh, I turned it over. I would say a goal for me would be like 330. Turned it over again. Okay, Trevor, more height. How about more height? Oh, that's crushed. Hmm. That last one was pretty far, but I can do better than that because it didn't flex out. I'm gonna go pick them up. That's just too much Anheuser, Trevor. I gotta throw it way higher than that. I'm just burning them over. That's frustrating. It's still gonna be turned the whole way. Dang, I stink. I tried to throw that one really high. It's still just turning the whole way. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try throwing the slammer. Maybe I need something more stable. Oh, that's actually mushed. I can do better than that with the Gladiator putter though, dang. There we go, that's a good ride. Okay, that's a max distance putter. I didn't have anything stable enough to throw on the high ante line, but that was a, that was a well thrown putter. I, I can't get it much further than that, so we'll use that one. In case you're wondering how I'm doing my measurements, I'm basically throwing out that way. I have my disc golf bag down as like an indicator of where I'm throwing from, and I'm just shooting it with my rangefinder. All right, we're gonna get some stock distances now with the mid ranges. I don't feel like I'll have these, these will go much further than the putters, but this will be interesting. We're gonna start, start with the uh, stock, stock hyzer. That's a little right to left shot. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna go too much further than my putters. All right, we'll go with the straight shot, just stock straight shot. That was actually a good straight shot. I threw it straight with the rock. I felt like a very good stock shot and hyzer with the Supra. That was more like a hyzer flip to turn. Oh, that's quite nice. Look at that. Hyzer flip guy. Stock mid range forehand with the Quake here. That's okay. All right, max distance mid-range. This is gonna be an interesting one because this should be able to go, I mean, I don't think my stock mids and my stock putters are too different, but I think max distance for all these discs, you're gonna see more separation because I'm really trying to get as much out of the disc as possible. We're gonna go with the buzz. I feel like I can throw this really far. I flip it over enough? Mm, probably not enough. No, that's not good. So you give it like the right height and just stall it out. Go, miss that. I just can't throw mids far, oddly enough. I feel like there's some discs I can't throw far. I feel like putters I throw relatively far. That rock I think is as far out as I can put a mid range. I had to throw it kind of straight. The Annie one wasn't working for me, but that might be 350, we'll see. All right, time for the fairway drivers. 
another one where like, I feel like there's not gonna be a ton of separation in my distance until I get to the distance drivers, but we'll see. Uh, we're gonna start out Stockheiser with the Honor. It's like my go-to hyzer disc. That's a good high hyzer. All right, stock straight fairway. It's about as straight as I can throw it. It's pretty good. All right, we're gonna do stock shot now with the Anheuser Stalker. And once again, it's gonna make a hyzer flip the turn. Oh, I did it good again. I'm like better at that shot right now than half the other ones. That was great. All right, stock forehand fairway. That was okay. It's not very impressive. <laughs> Let me also do some clarification. When I say stock, I'm talking about like, a lot of people call it golf distance. Basically the idea is I'm throwing a shot that is not taking any extra effort. It's just me smoothing it out there. You could argue it's like a 75 to 80% effort shot. It's a shot that I'm controllable at and to where at that level of speed, I don't feel like I'm losing any amount of accuracy. So that's what I consider my stock distances. All right, max distance fairway driver. This will be interesting. Nobody really ever throws distance or distance shots, yeah, with a fairway. I'm gonna try the T-Bird. Oh, I kind of cooked that. It needs to stay in the air. Ran into the soccer net. Okay. I'll try the stalker, but this thing is just like a six speed or seven. It's not gonna be great. Well, I did smush that stalker though. Whoo! All right, time for the distance drivers. We're gonna start with the stock shots and we're going on to the exciting stuff. See what these stock distances are. Distance driver, stock hyzer. That's a good hyzer. That is a stable warbird. Okay, stock straight shot with the Raider. Oh, I actually threw a straight shot. It's gonna hyzer a little at the end, but it's about as straight as it gets for me with a distance driver. Okay, stock Anheuser with the Raider. That's pretty good. It's actually a good Anheuser. I've been money on the Anheusers today. Okay, stock forehand distance driver. <laughs> that was actually like a great stock forehand. That might be my best distance forehand, honestly. That one was good. So far, interesting results in this video. At the end of the video, we'll also hop back into the lab, analyze the results, see if we can find anything interesting. But um, so far, I feel a little bit humbled. One weird thing about disc golf is you rarely find yourself throwing in just perfectly flat fields. A lot of times, uh, the throws that you remember, the throws that you mark your distance by in your head are slightly downhill. So like on a disc golf course, a shot with a fairway driver that I can only throw 330 feet on this flat ground might go 390 and so it is always a little bit humbling just throwing on flat ground um, but now it's time it's time for what you've been waiting for we're getting into the max distance distance drivers we are going to find the answer to that question how far can i physically throw now let me preface this by saying i have been recorded throwing a lot on camera i've done some distance competitions even on this very field uh, the furthest i've ever been recorded on this field which is like the fairest conditions I can really get is 465 feet or 462, something like that. All right, we're gonna start with the honey. So flippy, way too flippy. Oh, I'm just gonna turn everything over into the ground. I have to throw over stable stuff. It's the way I am now. That's really good. Okay, that's really good. Go disc. Okay, that's a good first attempt. I'm pretty confident that's well over 400. Well, I shouldn't say well over 400. Pretty confident that's close to over 400, but not. I can get further, I think. Oh, I'm just throwing that too low, man. I got into that so good too, sheesh. Oh, I threw it too wide. <laughs> Went kind of far. Ooh, if that flexes, that's gonna be huge. Go, get out of it. Oh, that's big. Ah, it dropped kind of quick though. It dropped. All right, one more attempt first round here, just to warm up. Going with the race. 
oh, the highs are flip. Oh, it's still too flippy. Dang. Okay, but well, we're gonna measure especially that, um, that destroyer because I got that one out there a bit. All right, here's the thing. That AJ destroyer just measured in at 440 feet on the dot. Pretty darn close to our target of 462. I don't know if I can throw one further than that today, but that was really happy because I think the last time I did this, I had a tailwind. If I could just get to 450 though, that would sound way cooler when people ask me how much I throw or how far I throw. So we're gonna try it again. Oh, it's just not gonna hold that, it's just not gonna hold that line. Top corner? Oh, almost went top corner though. That could be something. Keep flexing. I actually want this one to keep flexing. Oh my goodness. That's big. I don't even know how much the camera caught that. It was way up left. That could have been a big one. That could have been a big one. All right, this is like my last real chance in this round here with the other destroyer, our previous record setter. That could be it. Go, keep flexing. Oh my gosh, that's so big. I can't throw this further than that. No way. All right, I, I think, I mean, I might throw a few more as exhibition but that white destroyer or that blue one, one of them has to be as far as I can throw it. That was crushed. Side quest, max distance, forehand, uh, the road to breaking 300 feet. <laughs> Here we go, destroyer. That is just as bad as they go. That is awful. Oh, there it is. Okay, that one for sure is my max distance. Well, I'll get it out of the way. That, that was actually pretty far. I'll measure that one. All right, everybody, I have exciting news. I walked out there feeling very confident about where those shots landed. Walked to the shorter blue destroyer first, measured in at 457. Then I walked over to the white destroyer slightly further, and this measured in at 467 feet. I've done it. I've broken my personal best. Flat ground, no assisting wind. Might I add, even a little bit of a headwind right now. Just saying. I actually just got this disc. I, I called it to Toasted Marshmallow because the guy said it was in a swamp. Somebody gave it to me, I think Nate D gave it to me at USDGC. It's an Avery Jenkins Destroyer. It's awesome. Well, I just broke my distance record with it. So exciting. I, was, I honestly did not think that I was gonna be able to get it. I'm really excited. So there's your answer if you were uh, if you're a casual fan, you can click off the video now. You know how far I can actually throw. But in the meanwhile, I'm gonna hop back into the lab. We're gonna look over these numbers and just see what conclusions we can draw from them. Do a little study on them, if you will. All right, so we're back in the lab once again to kind of review these distances. Thanks for sticking around if you're a real serious fan and you wanna get into the numbers. Um, so I have everything in front of me here and I think there are definitely a few trends that are interesting. I've never personally done this much of an extensive distance report on myself, but uh, I think it, it there's some interesting things to look at. Number one, and by far the most obvious trend in this data, something you probably picked up on already, is my max distance shot with the distance driver, so the furthest shot that I'm capable of is much greater and far eclipses all the other shots I can throw by a margin that almost seems different from the scale of everything else I was throwing. This probably differs from player to player, but what this tells me is when I throw a stock shot with typical discs, what my body feels as a stock throw is much less. It's much scaled down from what my maximum power is. And even though I think that differs from player to player, I think that's true with a lot because even though my stock flat distance driver went 100 feet less than my max distance driver shot did, I still think that'd be true for a lot of professionals out there. In fact, I think with some of the further throwers on the planet, I think that gap gets even bigger because a guy like Anthony Brella, for example, his stock driver is probably still only going between 400 to 450 feet and his max distance shot is probably getting close to 700. So I think that is an interesting number to look at. Another trend in this data is the significant jump in distance when we move from the putter and mid-range category to the driver category. This isn't super evident in the stock throws, but more so in the max distance throws. If you look at all my stock numbers, we see a pretty steady and consistent jump in distance between each category with the largest jump coming when we got to the distance drivers. I think a lot of that's due to the fact that I do throw a lot of six and seven speed fairways. But when 
when you get to the max distance, we do see a pretty big jump going from mid-range to fairway. I think when exerting maximum power on a disc, the mid-ranges and putters almost have this parachute effect where because of how blunt and rounded the edge is, it just will slow down at a point. It almost has this terminal velocity that the disc just wants to hit the brakes eventually because then ultimately that is what it's built for. Drivers are much more likely to keep pushing and cutting through that wind and that's just simple physics. Overall, I'm pretty happy with these numbers. I like how consistent my gapping is with them, but I do think it's interesting when you throw stock shots at a flat field just how short those numbers seem to me. I honestly thought I wasn't throwing that far that day until I got my max distance record. And then I realized, no, this is just what my stock throws do when I have perfect conditions in a flat field. I honestly would have never guessed that my stock fairway driver hyzer, for example, was only going 300 feet on flat ground. There's so much information bias that enters your brain when you're playing on different disc golf courses, especially where I'm from, where you're in the Virginia mountains, we have a lot of elevation, which means that there will be times where I'm throwing mid ranges on 400 foot holes, even though that's not a stock distance at all. So it is kind of cool and refreshing to get all this data out, try to get to as level of surface as possible to throw on so that I can actually understand how far I throw each disc. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever done anything like this or if you want to try it in the future. I'd love to hear more about your stock distances and how they space out from mold to mold and throw to throw. One of the things about my data that I find is interesting is I do get pretty consistent distances from Anheuser to flat throws to hyzer. I think some people would probably differ a lot. I don't have a ton of preference how I throw the disc, but some people definitely prefer a certain angle. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this video and kind of deep diving into these numbers. Thanks again for all the support on this channel. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Let me know if you enjoyed this type of video, if you wanna see more data deep diving type things, and uh, we'll see you next week with another upload.